Anytime I have like a really bad day, like a sad day, <laughs> don't get me chicken nuggets. That's usually my go to, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I just need you to turn on YouTube karaoke and sing fucking perfect by pink. Pretty, pretty, please. Don't, don't you ever, ever feel. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Ride Home Podcast. My name is Abby. Hey, guys, I'm Caitlin. So tonight we are sitting on our couch mm -hmm. and we're just <laughs> in knots <laughs> <laughs> from all of the laughter that just happened right as the credits rolled from the movie that we are about to review. So if that gives you a hint at what you're in for... I don't know what does. Yeah, that's really all you have to say. Yeah, so we just watched the Peacock original horror movie, mm -hmm. They Them, mm -hmm. which I was very excited for because it was billed as a gay conversion camp slasher movie, which if I say that phrase, any queer person slash horror fan would probably be like, oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. What a great idea. Right. Maybe it wasn't the best. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a good idea, but I think these people who made this movie did yeah. not execute it. No. I know that we are already teasing into how we felt about the movie, but we thought that in order to fully discuss this movie and to really dive into what we need to dive into, this is going to include spoilers. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would be ethical of us <laughs> to make this episode without being able to go into it with spoilers. So, yes. So if for some reason you want to watch this movie <laughs> and you don't want spoilers, then watch it first. Yeah. But you don't have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I know at the beginning of every episode, I always ask you like straight off the bat mm -hmm. how did you feel about it and i feel like you already <laughs> answered that where you just said if you don't n need to see this movie you don't have to <laughs> yeah you just my thoughts are you just you don't have to see it unless you want a good laugh for the most part you're gonna be laughing at how absolutely stupid and ridiculous this movie Correct. is i'm gonna start with something if you were to guess who wrote that movie mm -hmm. just describe that person to me well, I do already know that it's a man because uh -huh. I saw that in the credits. Uh -huh. I don't think he's gay. Okay. Maybe based on <laughs> a lot of the things based on a lot about of the, the movie. Things, right. Okay. What if I was to tell you that his entire personal life section on Wikipedia is just, and I quote, Logan is openly gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's his whole, his whole, his personal, whole bio, which every queer person checks the personal life section first. So right. we need to know if you're gay or not. Um, what if I was to also tell you that he is a three time Oscar nominated huh? writer? And what if I was to tell you that he was the writer of Gladiator, The Aviator, Hugo, two James Bond movies and Sweeney Todd. I would say you're making it up. <laughs> Right. I don't know if he was under the influence of something <laughs> when he wrote this. I don't know if he allowed his like gay nephew to write to, <laughs> to ghost <laughs> to ghost write this movie and and got it signed off because he used his name. I don't know what happened, but that was genuinely some of the worst writing I've ever Dude. ever experienced Horrible. in a movie. Horrible. So, like, how old is he? He's 60 years old. Okay. That's the big problem. That's part of the problem. And to the writing, I do have a note in my phone that just says script hyphen what the actual fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I also was thinking through the whole thing, because you mentioned his age, I was just like, hold on a second, like... Whoever wrote this movie has no idea how teenagers talk, let alone mm -mm. gay teenagers, let alone gay teenagers of color. Yeah. Um, 
it's like he went on TikTok for uh, like a single half hour and was uh-huh. like, ooh, that's how they speak. Yeah. It was like, you know, TikTok videos where it's making fun of millennials trying uh-huh. to sound cool. And it's uh-huh. like, yes, slay the boots <laughs> down, girly. Yeah. <laughs> that's what the whole script was. Yeah. But his version of that was step your pussies up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and at one and right before step your pussies up was I am a black transgender woman. I can yeah. do this in heels. Step your pussies up. Oh no. It was John Logan, you have your your everything card revoked. <laughs> All of your cards. <laughs> Give them over to us. Primarily gay, but also just every, you know, Writing. membership to the guilds. Yeah, all of the guilds. <laughs> all of the guilds, all say, of the guilds back. say no. Yeah, it was borderline offensive. Some of the writing was kind of offensive. Yeah. The best way I can describe it is when you were talking about how your reaction was that he was not gay. It was almost like when you reveal, not reveal, when you, (laughs) hello, boo, I'm gay. (laughs) (laughs) When you come out to somebody and they overcompensate and by overcompensating, they start going like, okay, sis, pop off queen. Yeah. Like, especially I know, you know, we're both female presenting so we don't get that as often but i know gay men for the most mm-hmm. part they've all experienced like that, that straight woman at the bar that's like mm-hmm. yes girly slay yeah it felt like that woman wrote a, a horror movie yeah because it kind of felt like it was like i don't know if making fun of is the right word but mm-hmm. it it portrayed gay people as like caricatures yes i completely agree and i think just to dive into like the characters further i'm gonna give like a quick synopsis of just okay. what the movie is sure. so a group of 15 ish gay transgender bisexual just queer blanket children yeah. um high schoolers go to a gay conversion camp <laughs> run by kevin bacon of <laughs> all people and there's a group of six kids that's like the main cast mm-hmm. And their entire character is just like the label of which kind of gay they are. Yeah. And there's no other explanation. No. We have like the lipstick lesbian. Mm-hmm. We have the jock gay. Mm-hmm. We have the non-binary person. We have the transgendered woman. Mm-hmm. We have an effeminate, like a twink. Yeah. It was basically just like, let's make a cast of characters where it's like all the types of gay that you can be. We have a bisexual. Yeah. And it's kind of like a masculine presenting yes. girl. Yeah. And it was just like, that was the entirety of their character. We knew nothing else about them besides which brand of LGBTQ they were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah. And I was really put off by that just I from was, the beginning yeah. because that's really all we knew about them. We barely even knew their names it was I mean, hard to keep up yeah with like their we names. did know their names i could tell you their names right now right but felt very impersonal it did and you know what there was a line right at the end of the movie where the main character jordan who mm-hmm. is non-binary says to the killer you don't know me you don't know anything about me and i was thinking in the back of my head well neither do we yeah <laughs> do you <laughs> jordan <laughs> who are you <laughs> Please, you could you we you had an hour and forty one minutes to let us know who you were, and, and they were kind of the main character. Also, they were the main character, but like couldn't tell you a single thing except <laughs> there was this one brief scene where we found out that they were from a military family, mm-hmm. and that was it. And they also had a Bible that they doodled in. Yeah, but that's not even really noteworthy to say about someone. No, that's not like a characteristic of someone. It was very strange. And I think there were just some really big, big issues right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And John Logan just never solved it, fixed it, John explained Logan, it. Are you <laughs> sure you're gay? Because <laughs> it you didn't positive? feel like it. Like, did Kevin Bacon write the movie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought about that. I did. Of course, he was an executive producer. Right. That's not really surprising, but it felt a little Kevin Bacon y to right? me. Right? Didn't it? Like, maybe they wrote it together. Maybe they did. I don't know, man. I wish they hadn't. I wish they hadn't either. I really do. Again, 
in theory, this would be a really cool movie. The potential is unlimited. But like it just didn't meet the mark at all. No. And I will say that we got a little bit of false hope because right at the beginning, there was a really good opening scene. Yeah, I got goosebumps. Yeah. For my horror fans out there, it reminded me a little bit of the opening scene from Urban Legends. Um, It reminded me also a little bit of the opening scene from Get Out. Mm-hmm. I was initially like, oh man, like this is going to be a really cool movie. Yeah. And then immediately it wasn't. Cut to an hour and seven minutes later in an hour and 41 minute movie where I asked you to pause the movie so I could check the time. Not a single scary or tense thing happened Mm -mm. in that entire time. And there was a solid 20 minutes after that where nothing happened. Every kill besides that first kill and the one random caretaker that dies towards the beginning. Mm -hmm. There's not a single kill until 20 minutes left in the movie. And then they all die like five (laughs) seconds apart from each other. What a weird way to cram in a bunch of kills... Right. And the climax of the movie at the end of the movie. And it felt very messy and un undone. Like, I don't know. Unsatisfying. Yeah. Like, it was very mm-hmm. like, oh, you don't know who I am. You don't know this. And I don't know that. And that's that. Right. Like, and I just think like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> One of like m- <clears throat> the worst horror tropes where I immediately kind of sign off a horror movie as something that I'm like not a huge fan of is right at the end of the movie when the killer explains too much yeah and it's just too much like I did this because of this right and this movie unfortunately the entire last five minutes was just the killer spewing out their every reason for Mm -hmm. doing what they did and unfortunately like part of why a lot of horror movies are scary is because at a killer's core they often don't have a solid motivation and their motivation is a little bit crazed and this killer was a former camp goer goer who comes back and seeks revenge and kills Kevin Bacon and Mm -hmm. his cronies. That's all you need to know because literally this all happens in 20 minutes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, And the killer reveals that her entire reason was because she was a camp goer and she wants to cleanse the world of conversion camps. Which, if I might interject, when gay people are angry Mm -hmm. because they're discriminated against Uh or because... They've gone through some sort of traumatic event. Which we all have. We all have. We don't want to murder people. <laughs> right. You know what we want to do when that happens? We just want to be more gay. Right. And I think that the biggest issue, too, that goes along that same point is that when you're watching a horror movie, the reason why it's scary is because... Typically, the people that are being murdered are relatively innocent people. Yeah. And the people who are being murdered are the nerd that's just like you, Mm -hmm. the jock that's just like you. They're kind of usually these like everyday people that you connect with. And then you really get on board with like the final girl Mm -hmm. who usually has some spunk and some, Mm -hmm. you know, chutzpah that gets you, you know, connected to her. When the victims of your slasher are horrific people (laughs) who torture children for being gay. Right. It's not scary anymore. It's not scary. In a weird way, you're like, yeah, electrocute them. Yeah. When you told me that it was a slasher movie that happened in a gay conversion camp, I thought for sure that the slasher was going to be killing the gay people. Right. And that it was going to be like, gay people have to fight for their lives. And like, there's going to be like the one or two that make it out. But here's the thing is that you would have cared about them. You would have, it would have been, again, I'm going to. A completely different movie. If he wrote actual characters with actual backstories Mm -hmm. and personalities that weren't just whatever label sexuality they were. And they were getting hunted and killed in this camp. You would feel invested invested and you would want them to fight back and of course we don't want to watch 
you know a bunch of gay teenagers get <laughs> killed but at the same time the heroes of a horror movie and the people that get killed in horror movies are the people that you're rooting for they're not the bad guys no and for some reason, John Logan thought that we would just like sit there and be like, ooh, spooky conversion camp people dead. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. It just didn't work. No. Didn't work at all. Do you know what else didn't work at all? What? The overly produced, overacted pink sing along. Not only was it a sing along, it was a full blown <laughs> musical sequence. Oh my god. So there's no point in the movie where it hints at being a musical. No. And there's no scene after this scene where it is a musical. Correct. Um but in the middle of <laughs> in the middle of the movie, out of nowhere, a character is having a bad day. Mhm. Mm and to cheer that character up, all the campers band together and they sing fucking perfect by Pink. Which also <laughs> at the end of the movie, the credits rolled up and the yep. actual song fucking perfect played. Yep. And I said to Abby, did I miss something? Is that a song that gays like? <laughs> and I said, absolutely not. Because never in the history of my life being a, which has been a good six, seven years at this point. Yeah, that I've been, been like gay for seven years. Well, that I've been out <laughs> <laughs> and like with it. Right. I've never heard that played at a gay bar. No. I've never heard it played. No. I've never seen it in like a pride playlist. You know what? I could see some really good natured 40 something lesbians with three kids. They might like fucking perfect. See, because that's the thing. Old people like pink. He is 60. And I don't want to offend anyone who's listening in case like you like pink also. But like older people. <laughs> don't come for Caitlin. Tend to like pink. Yeah. It's just a fact. Like mm -hmm. middle aged and older people love pink. And they're billing this as a pack of Gen Zers singing a full they rendition of pink. would be singing like Lil Nas X or something. Right. Like it would be like Montero. <laughs> I you long yeah. ago. <laughs> Not pink. No. It was... Um, oh, it was cringe. Another thing that was very cringe that I was like, this is not a homosexual writing this movie <laughs> was there was a scene where a girl goes, I'm, I'm expecting Jason Voorhees to come through the woods and a gay character looks her dead in the eye and goes, who's Jason Voorhees? What gay person doesn't know what Jason, yeah. who Jason Voorhees is? And then they like kiss and they just immediately fuck on a dog. Yeah. I just shocked, shocked at everything that happened in that movie. Speaking of that doc scene, I had a, an actual huge issue with that doc scene because okay. they build it as this like big climactic romantic moment where these two gay characters are finding love in a conversion camp. But like mm -hmm. the one character is literally comforting another camper for getting hit on by a counselor a female yeah. counselor and their response is to out themselves as an undercover college reporter who's doing a piece on conversion camps <laughs> and then immediately bangs this girl that just had like a sexual assault basically yeah. happened to her on the dock and not only is that questionable like with intentions because this person's clearly in like a vulnerable state or whatever but also you just outed yourself as an adult She's yeah. a college student and this is a high schooler. And I was so disturbed. That is disturbing because if she was consoling her for being basically assaulted by mm -hmm. the camp counselor who was also a female adult. Yeah. You are also a female adult. Correct. So. You're doing the same thing. You're literally doing the same thing. And also what bothered me is not only was that sex scene problematic, but our other gay sex scene was literally a counselor undercover as a camper pretending to have an interest with one of the boys actually having sex with him and luring him into the shed mm -hmm. to get electrocuted afterwards to do aversion therapy. 
Yeah. And I was like, you're really, and this again, John Logan, we have a bone to pick with you, you have sir. so many bones You're really going to gonna represent the only two like gay sexual connections as predatory scenes? Yeah. The amount of like problems within this movie that are beyond just like script and story and it's <laughs> very homophobic. Yeah. It was a very frustrating movie. <sighs> to watch on all accounts <laughs> now the editing first of all i haven't seen this many crossfades since dr strange holy hell the entire movie was just let's crossfade to this scene and then we'll crossfade to that scene and then we'll crossfade in the middle of the scene <laughs> so maybe they let the intern give it a go it did <laughs> feel a little I mean? interny yeah you know when i'm like reviewing like intern pieces and mm -hmm. i'm just like click 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 take that transition out like mm -hmm. that's kind of what it felt like but like nobody told them to take the transition out yeah at parts of the movie mm -hmm. i was like did they choose to make it bad like did they want it to be bad <laughs> right so i was wondering if they were trying to go for camp yeah and but even that didn't quite no go. no it wasn't campy it wasn't campy at all i think another issue that i had was that every other scene was just a gay monologue where yeah. they were just like i've been gay all my life and no one has ever accepted me <laughs> And now I must accept myself and be gay. Like that and was. And you can too. And you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, if they had just built the characters as actual human beings, you could have digested their experience as like what it's like to be a gay teenager. Mm -hmm. And especially in like a non accepting or affirming household with much more genuine. Mm hmm and thoughtful delivery and this yeah. was just like let's force feed you some really nice speeches about being gay and unfortunately the acting was also really ooh. really rough ooh, ooh, ooh. the acting was really bad all around even mm -hmm. kevin bacon wasn't good see i thought he was actually pretty good i mean he's like he was creepy yeah he was creepy he plays like the the camp director and i think out of everybody in that movie, he gave the best performance, yeah, I think. I agree. Um, Jordan is non-binary. The titular character. The titular character. <laughs> and unfortunately, Theo Germain, I believe is their name, just gave the most stale and stiff performance. I think they had a rod up their back the whole time. <laughs> like they were wearing like a scoliosis vest. <laughs> Because they stood up so straight in every scene and like they didn't move their <laughs> neck. And so every scene it was like this scarecrow just like, yes, I have shot a gun before. Yes, I am from a military family. Yes, I am going to put my gun down and not kill you because I am better than you, slasher killer. <laughs> It was so oh, bad. Oh, no. It was so bad. And that was a really, really good impression. At one part, they were going through a filing cabinet and they found pictures mm -hmm. of abused children that have gone through this camp. And they were drooling for some reason. Yeah, why were they there drooling? Were, there were drips of drool. I thought they were crying. But there were no tears but coming. there were no nope. tears. It was drool. That was very bizarre. I thought their entire performance was bizarre. And yeah. especially as being the lead character, I am sure there are thousands of wonderful non-binary actors. Yes. And I'm not sure if it was like a nepotism thing, if like they know somebody who knows somebody. But I was shocked that that was our main character that we were yeah. supposed to get to know understand and root for not scoliosis Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> wrapping it up though i am going to say that i was a little bit shocked at the fact that we got two nude graphic sex scenes mm -hmm. but we had the strangest presentation of gore i've seen in a long time yeah we did not see a single kill on screen. Nope. 
Actually, we saw the caretaker, but he got his head hit into like a computer screen. Yeah, and we only saw the initial hit. Right. But this is like an axe killer. Mm -hmm. And all that we saw was like stripes of blood on the wall. Mm -hmm. We see the dead bodies and they Mm -hmm. just have like, it's like the makeup artist just took a a brush with... (laughs) With fake blood and just like, like a brushed, little brushed a little like, ooh, that's where you got slashed right across the face. No <laughs> indents, no nothing. I literally like my friend, shout out Troy, shout out the entire cast and crew of Smooth Operator, made a horror movie back in film school. And literally there was better makeup, mm-hmm. gore, blood, prosthetics mm-hmm. in that movie in a DeSales University <laughs> short film than there ever was in this movie and Mm -hmm. it was so strange i just don't understand like how you can justify like oh yeah sure we're gonna have like teenagers having sex but then not have any genuine body gore or like body horror right which especially for a slasher movie sure you don't need to see like (laughs) limbs flying off right (laughs) but like that's part of a slasher movie is is gore is seeing the actual slashing I don't even know that you could really call it a slasher. I don't think you could. I I would have a hard time describing this movie to somebody (laughs) as a horror movie, to be completely honest. Yeah, same. And I know that, like, he clearly has written Oscar-nominated pieces, and he, I'm sure, at his heart, is a good writer. But I think he was trying to go for the real horror of the movie is Conversion Camp. Right. More genuine representations of Conversion Camp Mm -hmm are more terrifying than how he represented this conversion yeah. camp because you know that it's real. Like we watched a movie a couple of years back with Nicole Kidman called Boy Erased and mm-hmm. it's about her son that goes through gay conversion camp and mm-hmm. genuinely more disturbing yes. than this movie. Like actually seeing what, and I know that was from like a memoir mm-hmm. of the person, the the kid that actually went through it. And I feel like that was more sick and twisted and like psychologically scarring yeah to watch especially as like queer people Mm -hmm. this movie it was just like the conversion camp scenes weren't scary right and the killing scenes weren't scary and so none of it was scary none of it was scary unfortunate really unfortunate needless to say this is absolutely a small popcorn for me. This is like half a small popcorn. This is like when we go out to eat before we go to the movies, mm-hmm. but we still get a small popcorn anyways because we feel like we have to eat popcorn at the movies. Mm-hmm. And so like we kind of eat some of it, but then there's just like some left at the bottom. And most of it just ends up like on the floor because one of us kicks it over by accident halfway through or the movie. Or I put it on the chair and it falls off. Off through the chair <laughs> through the chair the crack in the back of the chair <sighs> that's what this movie was that is what this movie was and i'm gonna leave you with my favorite quote of the movie okay just let's to hear. end this the quote of the movie in my opinion was delivered from kevin bacon okay in the climax scene when he's being confronted by a former camper who mm-hmm. is now planning to murder him mm-hmm. yells at her i am a man of respect here I'm on the goddamn Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> <laughs> we are both very hopeful that next week we'll deliver a little bit better on the horror front. Um, we are seeing bodies, bodies, bodies. Yeah, it's like an A24 wait. horror movie that um, it, it has been out for a little bit, but our theater hasn't picked it up until mm-hmm. next week. So we're going to review that. And I know that we also have some horror coming up the rest of this fall season Mm -hmm. we have the invitation we have barbarian and so hopefully we're gonna change the tune here and get to see some some good scary movies going into the halloween season we need some good scares yeah i hope you have a fantastic weekend if you do see they them shoot us a message let us know what you think if you don't i promise you you are missing absolutely nothing no Please don't watch it. Unless you want a good laugh. Unless you want like something to like make fun of. Yeah. And you want to like tell us what your favorite ridiculous quote was. There's a lot of them. There's a ton. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on the ride home. <laughs>